<clears throat> What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Shadowlands video. How's everybody doing? Apparently I'm out of coffee. <clears throat> I hope you're all having a really good day. Hope you are all feeling great. Hope you're all playing some World of Warcraft. We are going to be testing. So we've gone through most of the testing on the shaman builds I wanted to do. I went and did some survival hunter builds. I've had a couple people asking me about some warrior builds and um i i do have my warrior on the ptr i'm just not quite ready to do a video yet so we'll get to those later um what i wanted to try today was indeed to do a little experiment <clears throat> which is to compare two different builds so a lot of us have been debating in the chats having some really good conversations actually about whether or not Storm Elemental is just going to be like a million times better than Fire Elemental. Is there ever going to be a different build for Ellie Shaman? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to show you both builds in action. I'm going to try and do my best to do as much damage as I possibly can with the two different setups that I have going. I went and looked up <clears throat> one of the top um, Elemental Shamans that I could find on Raider.io right now. And I kind of copied his build. So... We're going to go Night Fae on the Storm. With the Storm Elemental build, we will be Night Fae. We are going to do the Korean, Korean Soulbind. And getting that extra crit, obviously, from First Strike, right? There's all those bonuses. And then his Wild Hunt tactics and all that jazz. So the Storm Elemental build is going to take Stormkeeper. You're going to take Storm Ellie. And then we take Primal for both. That's the only real difference is you go from Storm Ellie instead of Master of the Elements. So... That's going to be the um, Storm Elemental build, and we'll get to that in a minute. We're going to start with the Fire build. Now, the Fire build is Venthyr, of course. Um, sorry, it's uh, we are Venthyr, and we're going to take um, Theotar. I don't really know which Soulbind's good. Like, I think Nadia, the Nadia buffs are obviously fine, but Theotar gives us 550 mastery, which is no joke. And as, a, as an Elemental Shaman, you can kind of stand still for a little bit, right? We get the T at the bottom, so we're getting the stats from Theotar. We're getting 3% haste right now. And then I've ducked over here and grabbed the 6% versatility for 14 seconds after casting Chain Harvest, because we're going to get the cooldown of Chain Harvest, like, every 30 seconds. So we'll have we'll have probably 6% more versatility for, like, half of the fight, maybe. Maybe even more. Oh, this is a... I just did all, about 16k overall on the fire build. And how long was that mad... How long was that buff up for? It was up for almost 40% of the fight, this versatility buff. So... I think it's pretty good. I'm going to take it, and uh, we're gonna we're just going to go from there. What are we running with the fire build? Let me just set this up really quick. I'm going to set up both builds and try to... I'm, again, we're trying to give both of these a fair shake, and I just want to see how close the numbers are. You know, we, we, want to, we want to compare. That's the whole point of the PTR. We're just testing this stuff. Again, all this stuff is, like, subject to change. It's subject to be... Uh, different depending on how well how good you are at playing these builds i'm probably not good at playing either of them so um it's just something that you have to keep in mind when we're doing these these kinds of tests this isn't the be all and end all i'm just trying to get a rough estimate a rough numbers base to see like how good is this going to perform so for the venthyr fire elemental build we are going to run deeply rooted elements and i know that that sounds like weird to some of you you're like this is a this isn't even a good legendary it actually is and i'll show you why I'm going to show you why this is probably the best way to run the fire build if you're going to run it. Um, Skybreakers is what I was looking at before. and they said we were talking in the comments about Skybreakers. It actually does less damage overall than Deeply Rooted Elements. I was just testing it a couple of minutes ago now. Nothing wrong with Skybreakers. Skybreakers, in fact, might be sort of easier to execute, which we'll talk about at the end. But for now, we're going to look at Deeply Rooted and just give this build a shot. I'm going to keep the same gear between the two builds, except the legendaries are going to change. Obviously, and then we're going to go Night Fae for Storm Ellie, but we are Venthyr right now for this build here. How are we going to start this out? <clears throat> What's the basic play style of the Fire build? Let me just say that really quick, because it's I think some people might want to try this build, and it's really fun to do. So first of all, you have to summon your Fire Ellie first, and then you go into a Chain Harvest. Then you press the Fire Elemental special ability right away, because it's off the GCD. Then you press Stormkeeper. The reason we do Stormkeeper so late is because we're going to hold our Stormkeeper buff to try and fish for Ascendance procs from Deeply Rooted. And if we get an Ascendance proc, we're going to spend our Stormkeeper buff on Lava Beam, not on Chain Lightning. Because it's going to turn, Chain Lightning is going to turn into Lava Beam, right? So, 
That's how you do the rotation at the very beginning. If you don't get any procs on your ascendants, you're just going to spend your maelstrom. You're going to spend your stormkeeper buff on your chain landings, and that's perfectly fine. You're going to need to press chain landing a little bit in AOE. It's it because you'll have moments where um, you'll have no lava burst charges left, like maybe a couple seconds, and then you want to fill with chain landing, obviously for AOE. But primarily, we're going to be trying to press lava burst as much as we can, so that we can. Um, get the proc on Ascendance, because if we get the proc on Ascendance, it will fill part of that AoE profile that we're losing. It'll give us AoE, because it's going to launch Lava Bursts at everybody that's got Flame Shock on them. So, here we go. Again, no Lust or anything like that. We're going to go um, Fire Alley into Chain Harvest, press the ability. We're going to Stormkeeper right now, and then we're going to go... We're going to go, we're going to go, we're going to go. Try to get these procs. Get an earthquake. Oh, we got a proc. Here comes our lava beams. One lava beam, two lava beams, and an earthquake. And there we go. Then we keep going back into our set. Then we're going to fill with chain lightning a little bit here. We're trying to spend our Master of the Elements buffs on earthquake. We got another Ascendance proc. There we go. We don't really want to spend our Master of the Element buff on chain lightning, if we can help it. We want to spend them on earthquake. Our Master of the Elements says whenever we press lava burst, our next nature or physical spell will have 20 percent more damage right so there we go we're going we got another proc on ascendance we're gonna try and go for like two and a half three minutes or so that's about the average time that i've been going for these fights i'm gonna chain lightning here make sure i don't waste these buffs there we go we got another earthquake buff here we go our guys ability is coming up let's press it we got um stormkeeper coming lava burst into earthquake stormkeeper into Lava Burst. Try and get the procs on Deeply Rooted. If we can. But if we don't get them, that's okay. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to spend one of them. We're going to Earthquake. We got a Lava Beam. Here we go. There's a Lava Beam. It's awesome. Got a proc there. Okay. So that's what you want to try and do. With your Stormkeeper buff, you want to try and fill with Lava Beam. You want to get your Stormkeeper buff on your Lava Beam if you can help it. I'm going to press this once. Lots of stuff there. We're going to keep going for a little bit more. Our damage is pretty good here. Our AoE damage is pretty solid. Get the Theotar buff. Again, mastery, right? Theotar gives us lots of 550 mastery. Fill with a chain lightning into a lava burst. Lava burst into an earthquake to get the master of the elements buff. Stormkeeper's back. Last Stormkeeper. Let's try and fish for an Ascendance proc. Keep fishing. We got one. Here we go. We're going to press both Lava Beams here. Lava Beam. Lava Beam. Boom. And that's good. We'll run away there. We're going to dismiss. So, that was with the... That was with... Uh, five or, that was six targets, I, I believe, right? Because we had the extra uh, thing there. So, there you go. That's what it is. It's probably 22.5k, okay? Sustained AoE damage. And the damage there was... That was about 2.5 minutes. That was exactly 2.5 minutes. 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, let's go back to that. Our flame shocks are still ticking, unfortunately. 22.5k. Okay? That was our... That was basically what we did there. Now, let's run to town and switch covenants really quick. And then we'll come back and we will switch over to the... Um, storm elemental build. Now again, that's pretty good AOE. I think I got I think I got lucky on some of the ascendance procs. So you're not always gonna end up with the deeply rooted elements build. You won't always end up with like that many procs. But the longer that fights go on, the longer that you're in a dungeon, let's say, or the longer that you're doing a raid fight, the chances of you getting procs obviously goes up and up and up. So like it's it's um if you did like a 30 second little clip of this build versus the other build, the Ascendance build would be awful because you might not get any procs. Or you might get one or two procs in a 30 second window, which would be terrible. But if you go two, two to three to four minutes, maybe a five minute boss fight, then it's going to change. Everything's going to change. And you're going to get all those procs happening consistently. So here we go. We're set up for Karain. We've got... The Earthquake um, buff up here. We're getting the Crypt bonus. And then we've got the Storm Elemental one. We do end up dropping the Fate Transfusion one. But it's not as good as the Earthquake one. From what I understand. Oops, I didn't need to take that. Just from the build that I was looking at. From some of the guys who are much, much better at this game than I am. 
So for AO, this is pure AOE, right? We're just trying to compare AOE situations here. So <clears throat> let's run over here. Do, 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 do. We'll go back to this. We're going to run Storm Elemental. And obviously we are Night Fae now. So what are we going to get from Night Fae? Instead of getting five Flame Shocks on the enemies that are reducing the cooldown of our Chain Harvest, that's what we were getting before. Now we're going to get this Fae Transfusion, which is instead going to give us 24% crit, and it's going to reduce the cooldown of Storm Alley, which is great. And right now, um, that means that we'll get our Storm Alley back fairly quickly, and we can cast him at least twice in this two and a half, three minute uh, encounter here. So <clears throat> the focus here is not going to be on Flame Shocks at all, or on Lava Burst at all. We're basically not going to utilize the tier set bonus whatsoever, because... We're trying to do AoE damage, and you want to press Chain Lightning because it gets the faster uh, cast speed, right? Going, going, going. So that's the build that we're going to run right there. Our our bonus, once again, we get about 4% crit, but it ticks 6 times. 6 times 4 is 24, so 24% crit, 15 seconds. So we're going to summon our Ellie, then we're going to Fae Transfuse right away to get the cooldown going, and then we're going to go. So we're going to Stormkeeper on pull, obviously. Because we want to get that cooldown rolling as well. Stormkeeper into Storm Ellie. Let's just move this over to current. Here we go. Stormkeeper into Storm Ellie. And then we go. So Stormkeeper, Storm Ellie. We're going to cast this thing. Fate Transfuse. We're going to go. Earthquake. Earthquake. Oh, wait. I don't, know. I don't have, I have the wrong legendary on. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, hold on, I gotta cancel this. I got the wrong legendary on. We need to get the earthquake legendary on. My bad, guys. Let's get rid of him. He'll come back in a minute. I knew something was wrong. Okay, wrong legendary. Let's switch the build to the earthquake legendary. That's what you guys were talking about, and that's what everybody runs in Mythic Plus. There we go, we got it now. So we just have to wait a minute. My bad there. I knew something was wrong. I was like, I was like, I'm missing something. There's some gameplay loop I have to have to be doing so no problem we're going to uh we're going to switch that up and we'll just wait our 50 seconds for our storm ellie to come back and we'll be good to go oh we need fate transfusion too so we'll wait a minute that's okay so obviously the rotation is going to be uh whenever you get your your maelstrom up you're going to spend earthquake or i'm um, sorry for um earth shock and then you're going to get an earthquake afterwards right you get 120 percent more damage earthquake and we're going to see what that what that looks like my bad on that one. Um, I had one. Uh, I had er an earlier one where I was running, but I might not have played it super, super well. Uh, it's obviously not this one here, but let's just click. Where was it? 16? Nope. Down here. Down here. Is it? I've done a lot of these tests now. Let's check. Um, no. Nope. There's one that's very obviously not the Venthyr one. Well, we'll find it in a minute. There it is, 18. So I was doing about 16 and a half. It was, it was more like 17K by the time I walked away. But this is what this is going to look like. And it'll hopefully, I'll do even better than 16K. I'm probably not the best at this build, but that's okay. Okay, we got it all set up now. Right? We got Earthshock, giving Earthquake more damage. We have the crit from Fae Transfusion. We're good to go. Excuse me. Stormkeeper into Ellie, into Fae Transfuse. Going to press his ability. Earthquake. Oh, do this into this. Here we go. Earth shock into earthquake. We're really fishing for those aftershock procs, right? Obviously. We got another one that's going to go earth shock, earthquake. We got to get it again. We're getting the bonus. Earth shock into earthquake. It's much simpler to play, obviously. I think, anyway. You're just trying to cast. Okay, he's down. He's got about a minute left. That's okay. All good. Here we go. Another Earth Shock into an Earthquake. We'll get our Stormkeeper back, which is awesome. You can get an awesome combo off with the Stormkeeper buff, right? Because you can just, like, Stormkeeper into... Okay, I'm going to spend this now. Now I'm going to Stormkeeper. 
And I'm going to do this into Earth Shock. Once again, into Earthquake. And then once again, keep getting the bonus, which is awesome. Here we go. Our shock, earthquake. 19 seconds on our Ellie. Okay, keep her going. We got the buff, right? We're gonna earthquake. Six seconds on the Ellie. Earth shock into our Ellie. Earthquake. Ellie's ability. Get big damage. We're going. We'll fade transfuse in a second and get him back. Earth shock. Get our chain landings going. We're going to fade transfuse. Stormkeeper. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. So fast. Okay. So there's our damage. That's two of those guys. Let's see how long we've been going for. Yep, that's about a minute and a half. Because that's 50%. So that would be two, 240 actually. A little bit longer. So that's about 17k overall. Once again, I am sure that I'm not playing this to perfection. I'm really just trying to show that I think that both of these actually will have viability going into 9.2. So let's just do a straight comparison. I'll just like this guy. Let me just let me just look at both of these. So here's the breakdown of the oops, sorry, of the fire that was the failed attempt. Here's the fire one right here, right? So what's happening with the fire build? What is what is the actual um, breakdown of what we're doing. We're mostly just getting flame shock damage with our covenant ability, right? So chain harvest is doing a good burst of damage. It's giving us our flame shock damage, but what it's really doing is getting us lava burst procs the, from lava surge, right? And then we're turning those into a master of the elements buff on earthquake and a little bit on chain lightning as well. But really, what we're trying to do is the extra mini game of saying. Stormkeeper is going to trans uh, is going to translate into lava beam damage if we get lucky, and we did a bunch of times. And I understand that maybe you think, well, you're not going to get that lucky in real life, but I've done this test several times, and the damage profile has been fine. It's been good every single time. So this legendary will actually proc as much as it should. And again, the longer the fight goes, the better it'll be. But I really think taking Stormkeeper with Primal Ellie and Master of the Elements is the way to do the fire build. And you're going to end up getting a lot of Earthquake damage like everybody else would. Because you're juicing it with Master of the Elements. Now, you get so many Lava Bursts that you can do Lava Burst into Chain Lightning. Lava Burst into Chain Lightning. Lava Burst into Earthquake. If you get an Earthquake reset from Aftershock, Lava Burst into Earthquake again. And you keep getting 20% more damage on all of your spenders on your chain lightnings or on your earthquakes which is really really cool on top of that the tier set bonus is making your um lava bursts always do 20 percent more damage so you really want to be pressing that button and then of course it's going to give us a full-blown extension of uh our fire alley at the end of the day so it's going to keep your fire alley out all the time and it'll just you'll just keep extending because you're pressing lava um burst anyway on top of all of that excuse me we are, of course, running Deeply Rooted Elements, which means that every time you press Lava Burst, you have a chance to do an AoE Lava Burst because your Flame Shocks are, like, permanent because your Fire Ellie makes your Flame Shocks go double the duration and they do more damage. We don't, we're not getting the 50% crit from Skybreaker, so you're not getting the cooldown on Chain Harvest really, really quickly. But what you are getting instead is this chance to proc a big burst of AoE damage, a big stream of meatballs. And of course, that will generate a ton of Maelstrom, so you can immediately go into an Earthquake. It's almost like a little Stormkeeper buff. Every time your Ascendance procs, it's going to give you Lava Bursts at five targets. Lava Burst generates 
10 maelstrom that's 50 maelstrom like guaranteed basically and again this isn't this is just an ideal situation it's not going to be like this in every single dungeon or every single pull that you're doing but that's the idea is that you're almost getting a little stormkeeper buff with the ascendance proc every single time it goes you're going to get 50 maelstrom you translate that right into an earthquake you know earthquake costs 60 maelstrom but you're basically there on top of that, because you've just cast Lava Burst, your Earthquake is going to be 20% stronger. So instead of doing uh, 4,200 damage, it's going to do 5,000 damage every single, you know, every single time. On top of all that, like I said, you've got your Stormkeeper buff and you're fishing for the Lava Beams. So it's like, not only do I do I think that the, this Fire build here is doing fine damage, I think 22.5k aoe damage you're not going to see that every single time i got lucky on that pull in particular some of the other ones i've seen are more like 18k some are 17k if you get very very unlucky so what i'm trying to say is that i'm not trying to say that the storm elemental build is bad it's not i'm just trying to show you that i think both are going to work that's the fire build in the nutshell what's the storm elemental build bring let's talk about that one instead storm elemental obviously unfortunately doesn't help with our tier set bonus at all and i really hope blizzard would change this i'm on i'm on board with you guys i wish that this was different because the fact that this doesn't interact with any of the lightning side of the kit is probably kind of silly they're kind of pushing you towards a fire build with the tier set just automatically but storm elemental obviously gives you the cast time reduction on your chain lightnings and you saw as we were ramping up with the chain lightning damage it started getting really really good it started getting really strong and at the end of the day we ultimately were at about 17k overall it went down because of um i couldn't get out of combat right away but we were at about 17k overall i think i had about 17.5k on an earlier test that i did so i think that this is perfectly fine again with the earthquake legendary you're getting huge earthquake damage and um, you're really hoping that Aftershock procs for you, it's pretty essential that you get a couple of Aftershock procs in order to pull off an easy Earthshock into Earthquake combo. But Stormkeeper also helps to fill the gap because you go you go Stormkeeper and then you go Chain Lightning, which will get you immediately to 60 Maelstrom into Earthshock and then uh, Chain Lightning into Earthquake. So there's that little mini game that you're playing with the Storm Ellie build. And it's perfectly fine. It also, you know, does lots of damage on its own. Um, the Storm Elemental buff himself does good AoE damage with the Eye of the Storm. I think that does more damage overall than the Fire build. His Meteor, for example, so he does the Fire, the fire Guy does the Primal Blast, and he's doing Immolate, and then, uh, where's his Meteor? There it is. His Meteor only did 2% of my damage. The Storm Ellie, that's the wrong one. It's this one. The Storm Ellie's Eye of the Storm. Well, it still almost did about, only about 2% of my damage. So I know you guys talk about the AoE. And again, if there's more targets, then these guys will both do more damage. Because it's all enemies within 8 yards for the Eye of the Storm. And then um, the Fire Guy, his Meteor is also all enemies within 8 yards. Oh, up to eight enemies within 10 yards. So there you go. So the meteor is not as big, and it doesn't hit as many enemies, but it does hit eight enemies, which is probably the amount of enemies you would expect to be hitting at any given time. Anyway, that's a really sort of moot point. The point is here, these two builds are kind of radically different in how they play. The fire build gives you the passive lava burst, like lava surge procs from your flame shocks. It makes your flame shocks last forever. And then you can keep pressing lava burst sort of funneling into like a single target to try and get the re the ascendance to proc so that you get an aoe proc on all of your lava bursts all the while you're pushing the lava burst damage because of master of the elements into earthquake damage so you're getting extra aoe damage from the earthquake and again like i said the ascendance proc is sort of like a stormkeeper effect in the sense that it does aoe damage and it gives you about 50 maelstrom you also get to take stormkeeper on the fire build and try to translate that into lava beam damage which is kind of neat it's a really neat play style as you can see here the lava beam overload itself did quite a bit of damage it did 7.6 percent of our damage just because we were able to fish for those procs and get it and because that's just a little mini game that you get to play lightning build of course has strong AoE, you get the huge chain lightning procs over and over and over and over and over again, which is great. Gives you lots of maelstrom, gives you lots of damage, gets you to the earth shock earthquake combination in your legendary much more quickly. So I don't think either one of them is bad. 
that's my conclusion. This has just been one test. This doesn't really mean a whole lot. It's, it's a static vacuum test. We're not in real life scenarios. However, I, I do think that they're both viable. I think that both of these are going to be perfectly fine. I think the damage on both of them is going to be perfectly fine. And um, we, again, we, we did both of these fights for about two and a half minutes, um, which that's a long, that's a long time. You're never going to have a pack for quite that long, right? So, but it's just to give you an idea of the overall. Let me know what you guys think. Those are the two builds head to head. I don't think any one of them is better than the other. I think you really can just pick whichever one you want. And that's what's so great about 9.2. That's what's so great about the double legendaries and the tier set bonuses and all this stuff that we're, that, that we're getting in 9.2 is that I think you can experiment and just have some fun with some different builds. Give it a shot. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one.